welcome back to the latest edition of Insider Knowledge. My name is James and today I'm going to be talking about investment bonds, uh, often known always as insurance bonds uh, and sometimes known, in, known as custodian of assets. They are uh, quite often all the same thing. Uh, they are usually uh, provided by companies with very large names which I, I won't go into here. Um, but they will be familiar to many people who are watching this uh, video. Okay, all I'm going to talk about today is the initial charging structure. So when you first take out a bond, um, you take out a bond and uh, you're often told the only charges are 1%. Uh, that's just not correct. Um, the charges if you're taking a bond out through a fee-based advisor will typically be around about uh, 2%, including the annual fund charges. Um, and uh, if it's not a fee-based advisor and a commission-based advisor, the charges escalate quite dramatically up to around about 3.4 uh, to 4.3%. And that's before any annual management charges are being charged for servicing by the IFA. So you can see there's quite a stark contrast there. What I'm not going to talk about today is a comparison with cheap alternatives. I've done other videos about that. What I'm going to talk about today is what happens uh, with those charges in the early years because this is often misunderstood, especially when people put their money into pensions and they use a bond, I should say. So they take out a bond or you take out a bond. Uh, you're not aware that you're actually going to be paying charges of, let's call it 4% on average. You're not aware of that. Every single year you're going to be paying 4%. Also what you're not aware of is that those 4% charges will remain in place typically for around 7 to 10 years. It depends on who you take the bond out through um, and uh, exactly what kind of commission structure has been applied. Also what you're not aware of, and this is the most important thing to know, is that the bond charges are not directly linked to the investment value. They are actually linked to the current investment value or the initial investment made. So for example, if you take out a £100,000 investment bond and one year later it is decreased in value to £90,000, your bond charges will still be on the initial investment value. So if it's 4% and 4% of uh, 100,000 is 4,000 pounds, okay, you will still be paying 4,000 pounds roughly, might be a little bit less because not all the charges are actually uh, linked to the initial value. You'll be paying a little bit less than 4,000 pounds, but you now only have 90,000 pounds actually invested. Now clearly that is uh, going to eat into your returns uh, and in order to combat that, you either have to take more risk uh, or indeed you have to try and get out of the product and this is what we encounter we meet clients sometimes who are three or four or five years into their product and um, because of the escalation of fees because the fees are effectively locked and their value of the bonds has been going down it means that they're in the situation where um, you have to make a very hard call as to whether you're going to retain that bond and try and now produce say six or seven percent per year of returns just to stand still or whether you're going to come out of that bond and suffer some kind of penalty. Uh, the penalty can be called a surrender penalty, an early take penalty, whatever you want to call it, but nonetheless it's a penalty. How do you avoid all this? Well, take out a bond for a fee-based advisor. That would be uh, my uh, point of, call, point of uh, advice if you have to take out a bond. But the question is, do you actually need a bond at all? That's not the purpose of this video today, but you just have to be aware that your charges are linked to the initial value. What happens if the investment increases in value? Well, it's great, isn't it? Because the uh, providers of the bonds actually increase their charges proportionally if the investment increases in value. So it's completely loaded in the, uh, to the advantage of the provider, they get their money one way or another. They're going to either end up getting their money um, on the basis that it was uh, uh, charges linked to the initial value, or they're going to get their money on the basis that the investment value has increased. Um, 
As I said earlier on in the uh, video, uh, is that true of all the charges on the bond? No, it isn't. There are some charges in different bonds. They're set up different ways. Uh, and some of them are, for example, uh, fixed fees. So they obviously don't alter. Some of them are um, fund management charges. And the fund management charges do tend to alter in line with the actual investment value because obviously there are a percentage of the actual investments made. So it's not, strictly speaking, um, uh, um, absolutely fixed. The, the bond charges uh, will uh, remain absolutely level. But nonetheless, you need to be aware that some charges will be remaining level. And that can be uh, quite serious to people, especially people who use bonds as the underlying vehicle for a pension. Uh, my best advice to anyone doing that is to say, why? Because uh, I'm not entirely sure why you would be using a bond as an underlying investment vehicle for a pension. Anyway, thanks very much for listening to me. Um, Please remember to rate this, comment, subscribe to our channel uh, and uh, be sure to tune in again for our future videos of course. Thank you very much and I look forward to speaking to you again.